All right, guys, how's it going today? So she's, she's, uh, she's getting a little hot out. It's hotter in the shop because him, because he was running. So he's just dumping all the heat off into the shop and I have no way of getting rid of it. That little fan there doesn't do much. So, so I went and did a little bit of mudding again. Um, went down to where the old bridge used to be at there and Try to get onto our land. I got a little further this time, but when you got on top of the little hill that's kind of right there in the corner, the freaking hill is slimy. I don't know why, but I tried to back up. Guess what happens? And then the ass end breaks free and I slide down the freaking hill. So before I get too deep into trouble, I just stop, I put it in low, and I kick, kick, kick the four wheel drive on and pull myself back up the stinking hill again. So, sorry I tore it up a little bit, but whatever. I think our grounds are gonna be a little, it's gonna be a little fucked this year. It's just too, too many ruts going on, and I think we can get out into the square field good enough now that we can clean up most of that shit that's still in the big square field. Um, Cause there's a little bit left in there yet that I gotta, I gotta do. So, yeah, but we're gonna need both tractors for that, just so we can get it done in maybe within like an hour. Um, so there's that. I fixed the electric fence again in the ex mayor's field. Some somebody knocked it down again. I guess the fucking deer they broke it in half. We don't have any flags on it to really mark it. I guess we should maybe think of that. You can buy like little flaggy things that will hang on them. You just tie them on, and I guess it lest the deer know that it's there's something there because i imagine when they walk into it you think they would i mean they you think they would realize it by now especially since this is our second year doing that of course it could be a new bunch of deer too but come on you gotta learn after the at least after the first three shocks you think you would learn something but whatever so um i had to fix that get out of here you fucking bee Okay. You're not making a nest in this building if that's what you're thinking about. So, yeah. So I had to fix a fence. Luckily that only took a year. Is that bee going to go back out? It did. All right. This is my weapon paint. Because I don't have any like actual bee spray, but, you know, it still hurts them. Especially if they get it in their eyes. So... But, yeah, so fix that. Who knows how long that fence has been down, but, you know, obviously the freaking deer do it. I don't think the cows would do it, and they don't even try to go. I think our cows have learned to, they know where the fence is at now, so they stay away from that area. Regardless if it's down or not, you think they would realize that it's down, but, again, the wire is so tiny that maybe even they can't see it until they touch it, you know, it's the same thing with the deer. But that's why you can put little flags on them. Um, see, like, I have these flags, of course, they're not the right ones, but these are, like, marker flags for in, in the ground. But they wear out so damn fast. See these little things here? I mean, within a, a, especially if you have a good, strong wind going on, they're done in about two months. So, we need something that'll last at least a year. So, I'd have to, I guess, buy some kind of, you know, something like that, but maybe that's a little heavier. And that can withstand the wind and the sun and the weather and whatever else you want to think about. So, or whatever else there is. So, yeah. I don't know, maybe that would help the deer see it. I don't know. So, but they keep doing it. We this is, I mean, even last year too, they broke it quite a bit. But it gets kind of old, especially when they do it every day in a row and you got to go back out there and fix it, you know. It's literally every day they, they seem to break it, so... You think the damn bastards would learn, but they just don't seem to learn nothing. Stinking deer. I think I've seen at least two or three bucks already so far in town in the last month. There's one that's pretty young yet because he's just his antlers are just kind of starting to stick out and they got fur on them. So that usually means that they're they're uh, pretty young. They're pretty young. So, but um, yeah. So we're gonna get onto the. Farm LA here. 
um, I've been making, I keep making update videos, but then I keep learning new stuff, so then it, um, the older videos just seem pointless, so it's, I just keep deleting them, but, um, so, Rusty 6 came up with the idea to maybe, because that cylinder, or I thought it was a cylinder, but I don't know, apparently not, but, um, we thought, I thought it was a cylinder anyway, so Rusty 6 recommended to get a stick, like a wooden stick, and then a the biggest man hammer you can find, which in this case would be a sledgehammer, and then uh, beat that cylinder down, I guess, to kind of see if it's actually the cylinder. Um, I don't really think it was, but I can't really pinpoint what it, what it was, but I was able to drive that, that piston down as far as it'll go. Of course, the sidewalls are pretty, they are pretty fucked up, but um, there is some, I think it's called pitting, you know, in the, the sleeve, but it's a pretty small amount, so I don't know if that's going to really be an issue when it comes time to actually run it, but um, I drove that, that cylinder down, and there was a ring of rust on the, on the sidewall, or the, the sleeve, whatever you want to call it, I wasn't really too sure what I could do with that, so I took a risk. Not really a risk, because if it's, I mean, if it's not going to probably break the sleeve, but I was being gentle with it. I just took a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and a hammer, and I lightly tapped that ring of rust, and they popped right off with no damage. So I was able to pop it all, pop it all off, and then at the very top, of course, there were some rust and some junk um, but then I noticed too that when the cylinder when I finally got it to move it, it went up all the way but then it, you could see where it was kind of rubbing the cylinder was rubbing on that rusty spot so I grabbed my sanding block and which is this guy and I need to seriously get another one of these 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 are this is pretty much this guy here this thing's pretty much done and I didn't realize these were washable I guess if you read the fucking instructions, you learn something, but I guess you can actually wash these and reuse them, but mine's getting so wore out anyway, I need a new one. And they're only like 10 bucks or something anyway, so you get a new one of those. So I took that sandpaper, which actually fit perfectly in the piston wall, and I was able to kind of, you know, go up and down, left and right, you know, acting like a piece of sandpaper, sanding any little bits of rust and stuff that were sticking up. And it was working because it got it, it got it down enough to where it, well, the cylinder wasn't rubbing on it no matter what I did. So, so what the problem was, well, I still don't really know, to be honest with you. But it was not the cylinder. I don't think it was the cylinder at all. Um, it had to have been something. Now, it could have been because when it was leaking through that cylinder, the water and the rust and whatever, it could have went down and just got hung up somewhere or something but what was happening is I would drive that cylinder down the one that we thought was stuck because then all the other ones would start moving with it which is a good sign so I would drive all the way down and then I would try to crank it over like I was starting it you know with the hand crank and it, and it would go up but then it would only stop at a certain distance and then it was like the whole engine was just seized so I was like well what's going on here could the PTO be engaged? Maybe there's some, some slop in it and maybe, you know, I'm able to turn everything before it all locks up. No, the PTO was disengaged. I checked the transmission. Of course, if it was, if it was in gear, you wouldn't be able to move the engine, period, because it would all be solid. I always check that it's in neutral anyway, you know. So, I got a deer that's coming in for, coming in for, can't even see her, but she's coming in for Dindin. So... And Rusty 6 also recommended to, you know, to soak it. Okay, I did that. And no matter what I was doing with the piston, if I drove it all the way down or up or whatever, I would throw some mortar oil in there. I, I switched over to some used engine oil because I can't keep using PB Blaster because that stuff's expensive and I'm running low on it and I need it for other things. Oh, this is actually our buck right here. That's our youngest buck right there. Yeah, I can see his little pointers sticking out. Looking at me, but he won't give me a hug yet, so. Um, 
yeah, so, but this is where it took me a couple of days because I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Um, I was like, well, it can't be the piston because if, it, if there was something on the piston, you think that if you, once you got it up all the way, it would be scoring or scratching the sidewall and it's not doing that. So I don't know if it was something on the very bottom of the cylinder and maybe it was catching the underside of the engine block and then just getting hung up. Or if it was something on wherever it rotates on that arm, you know, that connecting rod. Wherever that pivots at, I was thinking maybe there was some rust buildup or something on that. I don't really know, but <sighs> this is what was a pain in the ass. But I had to do it. The only way it was, it was working, but it was very freaking slow to work. But what I had to do was turn the engine as far as I could by hand and then put the hand crank in and then grab the sledgehammer and hit the the handle you know that you would use to rotate the engine when you're cranking it by hand so as i kept smacking it it just kept slowly turning the handle of course it just it bent the piss out of the handle so the handle you probably could straighten it if you had a really good torch you know and you could bend it back straight again but i don't know i think there's a spare one in the truck so in the green truck but you can buy them online too but this one still works it's just you know it's mangled it's definitely not going to be a showpiece anymore unless you get it you heat it up and straighten it back out but so i don't really know what was going on but i just i, I kept smacking it and smacking it and smacking it and i could see it was moving very slowly up so there was something going on inside the engine that it was hitting a rough spot and it, and I don't know if dragging the tractor in gear would fix that or not, but that was a freaking nightmare. I was kind of afraid too that I might break something at some point, you know, either the handle's going to break in half and shoot me, you know, go through me and I'd be done. Or I'm going to break something in the engine because, you know, I think some parts are aluminum. So... I don't know, I think it's all just cast iron and steel, but I don't know, there could be something in there that's aluminum and that could shatter, but I had no choice. I was like, it's either this or it's nothing. You know, you just completely put a whole brand new engine in it. There's really nothing else I can do. So, so I just kept beating the piss out of it. It, it took me a couple days. And then when I was right at the very bitter top, I gave it one more smack and then I heard a big click, and then the engine, it turned over all the, all the way. So there's, I'm not really sure what that clicking sound is in the engine, but it seems like when you get to, when you make a, maybe a full rotation, you hear a click, and then, I'm not really sure what that does. Maybe something has something to do with the hand cranking starting part of it. I'm, I'm not really sure. But, once I finally broke through that, whatever that hard spot was, some bitch turns over perfectly fine now. There, it's it's perfectly fine now. So I'm not really sure what the hell was going on with that engine, but whatever it was, that's the reason why we couldn't even get it to. I mean, that's obviously the reason why we couldn't couldn't pull couldn't pull it, you know, to break it free because it was obviously pretty hard. But I managed to uh, pound it over. But I don't know that. I mean, I guess if the engine grenades, it grenades. It's not like it would. It hurt my bank account having to go get another used engine. But what are you gonna freaking do? You know. So I'm. We got it going. But I mean, if it did any real major damage, I don't know. I won't know until it actually physically runs on its own and it just comes apart. So if it don't come apart, then we're good. But if it comes apart, then we're screwed. So the other words, the frickin' thing is free. It's not stuck anymore. The problem is now I gotta find a head gasket and the other little metal gasket part of it. And I looked it up online and they, one I was looking at was for farm OAs. And I, I'm not even sure if I'm reading this crap right, so somebody's gonna have to let me know, but there was like literally two different kinds um, of engines for these tractors, but one 
I don't know if it, if it was an air-cooled kind of engine or what, but the first gasket set that I looked at said it was for an engine without a water pump. Well, what gas engine that fits in a farm all that is an air-cooled engine? I can't think of any. They're all water-cooled, which is what this is too. Well, that part, to get order that gasket part, was $34. But then I found another one that was meant for an engine that is water-cooled, like ours. And that's like 75 bucks. Of course, it comes with a couple of more extra pieces because of the water neck and everything, you know, and the water pump. You can get all that gasket, because I'm not going to use the water pump gasket because it's not leaking, but at least we'll have it when the time does come. But uh, right now, to get the head put back on, I need, I need the gaskets for that. So, and then they were saying... You have to, they, they have a list of what engines this will fit in. And I don't know if, if it's correct or not, because they go by up to a certain serial number. So supposedly, if it's got a different serial number, then it's, the engine's the same, but it's slightly different. I don't freaking know. So what I have here, I had to Google it. Supposedly, these Formal A's come with a C113 gasoline engine made by International Harvester or Farmall, whatever, but it's a C1113 C113 um, and then, then people were saying that you need to go by the date people can say that, also say that you can find out the, the year of your tractor by running this number which I have to go online and do it because I'm not really sure but I have 1127, and then the letter, I think, that, I think that was a letter I. It's either an I or an L. But supposedly, you have to go online, and they, they have the, like a conversion thing that you can convert that letter over to a number. And then supposedly, that's supposed to give you the year of your tractor. So as of right now, I don't know, but I'll put it in the title or something when I run that through their through that through the googling machine there and they'll figure that out so we'll know hopefully we'll know what the year is on this tractor but they have 11 27 and then the letter i or l or whatever whatever it's supposed to be and then you're supposed to do do the conversion thing and then that'll tell you so but the engine serial number for this tractor um again i don't know if this is going to matter or not but i think this is just the part number for the block, but I have a 3563-18R1, and that sounds like a part number, so that probably would be the part number of the block. But supposedly there is no, like, serial number for the engine that I can find. So, but then they're saying that you have to also have to find the serial number of your tractor. Now, mine has has a double A, so AA dash, uh, I don't know what the double A stands for, maybe it doesn't stand for anything, it just looked like it had a double A, so that's, but it definitely has at least one A, but it looks like it had two A's. So it's AA dash 145300. That's the actual serial number of the tractor. That's underneath the seat on like the driver's side so it's on the on the fender part of it there whatever the hell it is so i have a bulk of my information here i just have to go online now and do that conversion thing for the year but i don't really have i guess maybe i'd have a rough idea but I, again i don't know so um because i gotta do this i gotta figure out exactly what gaskets i need I didn't think it really mattered because I just figured all farm all ladies were the same. My uncle said that the engine that's in there now, I forget exactly how he said it because I got kind of confused, but he said it was a Super A engine, but yet, it, but yet it come out of a combine. So I don't know what combines back in the day used a Super A farm all engine. See, I don't know that stuff. I don't know any of this stuff from way back in the day. I'm learning as I go. So, so if it really is a Super A engine, 
again, I don't see the difference between all the farmalls. A regular farmall A, a super A, um, and, I, and I think there was like an AV, whatever the fuck that is. That's a new one I've, I've heard. Uh, and then you have the cult, the cult division, which is what that is, but I don't really know if that really matters. But the thing is, too, is that on Steiner's, they don't have even have the cult division written down. It's just A, Super A, um, the AV, whatever the hell it is, and then they got some models for, like, a crawler-type tractor also listed on there. I guess they, they take that same engine. So, I don't I just have to... I guess do what I do what I can do with what information I got and hopefully I order uh, the right uh, gasket for it the problem is too is that I have a stud that's kind of messed up too because obviously when I was throwing the sledgehammer around I kind of nicked the, the stud a little bit so I'm hoping I can try to save it because I don't really want to have to buy studs and I think if you have to if you have to buy studs then you got to buy the complete set of them and I only need the one Again, I guess you could keep them as spares, but I don't want to have too many parts laying around. I'm not trying to start a farm all business, you know. So, <laughs> so I don't know. But hopefully with what the information I have, I can find out which gaskets are correct for this engine. Um, supposedly it's a Super A engine that come out of a combine, but again, I don't really... That's what my uncle says. So I don't know if he was there to actually witness... It having a heart transplant or what? I'm not really sure, but uh, I wasn't. Maybe my uncle was, or maybe just my great grandparents told him that, you know, this is basically its second engine, so I don't know. But the original engine is sitting in a building. They actually never got rid of it, so I don't know if that, of course, they never had a can on the stinking exhaust pipe, so I imagine that's all just. I checked it to see if it was full of water, but apparently not. It's just full of oil, like it should be. But I know there's something wrong with that engine, too, so that's why it had to get a heart transplant, you know. So, um, I don't know. It would be kind of nice to take that engine out, pull it out of the building, and rebuild that one, you know. At least, because I wouldn't care if I fricked it up, I fricked it up. Who cares? I can just go throw it in the junk pile and be done with it. But, I mean, if I could rebuild it, I might as well rebuild it. And then... I guess you could just always just save it as a spare. And at least it would be the original engine to the tractor, too, but who's going to have time to rebuild an engine? It would be a good wintertime project, but my my shed, my shed shop here is not heated, so... And I can't really do it in the summertime because I'm, I'm more busier in the freaking summertime. So, because I'm always doing something. Freaking mosquito. So, I don't know. So, yeah, it will be, uh, it will, it, I don't know, it, it'll be kind of interesting, I guess, to see what I can find, but $75 plus shipping and handling, that's going to be quite expensive, but I need them too, because if, if I can put the head back together, torque everything back down, get some spark plugs, change the oil, oh, yeah, it's got a fleet guard oil filter in it, so freaking right. I like Fleet Guard filters. Not sure how easy it's going to be find, to find those style anywhere. I could probably find them on eBay, I'm sure. That's where all mine come from. Because a guy that used to sell Fleet Guard filters here, is here shut down a couple of years ago. So they're not here anymore. So I think AJ said you could, you could, go, you could go through Case IH and they would have them. But I don't know. I guess I've never done it. So I, I, I'm not familiar with that. So, so I don't know. But I... Every case I used to do, it might be different too, but you know, they probably could get them too. If they don't have them in stock, they could most likely order them. But but I think with these tractors, they have a conversion kit now for the oil filters. So instead of having that canister type, you can just have a spin-on filter now. You could just remove all that and then put a spin-on filter on it. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. I kind of would like just like to leave it the way it is. Probably going to need rewiring, I'm sure of it, but... There's not a whole hell of a lot of wires to this tractor, so I could probably easily convert it to 12 volt and be done with it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it for 6 volt because that's not really priority right now um, for, for rewiring. Ah, get this. 
all the lights work on the tractor. Isn't that freaking mind blowing? A six volt system. Who knows when those bulbs were ever changed, if they were ever changed. I imagine the tractor wasn't ran much at night. But I'll be freaking damned. They all work. All three of them. There's a, I think there's like a low and a high, just like it there would be on your car. So it's kind of interesting to see on a tractor because um, my 1586 doesn't have that. It just has road lights and then work lights and blinkers. But I think a lot of the newer tractors have that though, the high and low beams and their headlights. But, but like, just like they do on this on this little tractor, you know. So, but on on my 1586, that that wasn't a thing. So I guess you didn't need it. But again, I'm not going to be using my whole my lights a whole hell of a lot. But it would be nice to have lights, you know. So in case you do get caught out in the dark, you know, at least you could see your way, find your way home a little easier without having to have a headlamp on or something stupid, you know. But and then we also, well, I, I pulled the the battery out of the green truck because it's a six volt truck as well so is the tractor so i pulled that battery out and stuck it on there and we tested the starter of course the starter the electric starter was a little grumpy she was not engaging like it should gave it a few smacks with the hammer still wasn't doing much eventually it seemed like it started catching on but my uncle said it's always been kind of like that it needs to be i guess rebuilt or something but um uh, the grain truck's kind of like that too, and so is the 400. They're all kind of, the starters are kind of iffy. Of course, the, the 400 has a brand new starter on it, but I think it, it's a cheap Chinese brand, so it's obviously going to start going out, but I don't know. On this tractor, anyway, the starter doesn't grab like it should. It seems like sometimes if the engine's sitting just right, it, it, it'll it grab, so I don't know, but it's kind of, that's also kind of a come-and-go problem too. It just kind of, it will engage and sometimes it won't regardless of what the engine's doing so but <laughs> i don't know so yeah we can put that some bitch back together i don't know when i'll get it put back together but because i gotta i'm still trying to save money for this hunk of shit but you know so can't go crazy and, i mean i can put a lot of money into this tractor because i got a lot of stuff i can go through them you know through my repair shop and i can put it on my bill tires oil filters whatever well the filters i'll probably order online but a lot of stuff i can put on my bill i can just pay on it you know kind of throw out whenever i need it so or whenever i can give them something so but i'm not going to put any more money into it until i find out what kind of gasket will fit that engine and then We'll put it all back together, tark it all down really good, and then dump the oil. Probably have to see if I can find a filter for it online. Uh. And then, yeah. So, I think if we could put that thing back together, you know, if I could order the part tonight, well, then, we, you know, it would probably take a couple days to get here, but it's not going to happen. But I think we could almost have this thing running probably by the end of july if we if we worked on it hard enough so because I, I might try to order if i find the correct gasket i'll either order it at the end of the at the end of this month or it'll be early next month when i order it put that on put it back on put the head back on tighten it all back down um put it you know then we'd be getting somewhere. But another problem too is we're not going to have the lift for the mower because the pipe broke. So that's going to be another thing that I'm going to have to figure out at some point too is how can I fix that. But we'll worry about that right now. It's just the engine I got to put back together now. So, but yeah, two days of banging on it with a freaking you know sledgehammer, one way, both ways. But. I don't know, I, like I said, I don't know what its problem was. You know, why wouldn't it, it, I could drive it backwards, but I couldn't go all the way, the other way with it. You know, just the way that you would turn it when you're starting it. So it seems like it, it would get pinned up. So I guess whatever it did, I don't know, I guess I broke through it or I broke it off or whatever the hell it was. But she's turning over and 
I don't hear anything funny, funny besides that clicking sound, which I think is normal. Um, so I don't really know, but <clears throat> I don't know. it would be kind of interesting though. I might try it though, but I don't know when I'll do it, but I might actually try to see if I can hand crank start that thing sometime too. Once we get it all back together, obviously I'm going to use the electric start for now. Hope we can break her back in, but at some point I wouldn't mind uh, using a hand crank. Even though a lot of people say too, you can break your wrist on that for how it is. But just gotta, I guess, be careful enough, you know, let go of it right away. They say you gotta hold it a certain way too, so then if it does, you know, so it can break free of your hand and not take your hand with it, so. But whatever <laughs> so i guess yeah so i guess i'm gonna take off i just want to let you guys know what was going on that we did get it free so hot damn about that uh but it's it's, it's this is only i don't know like 60 percent of what i need to do to it you know so i gotta put it back together now and then make sure everything's good and good to go on there dump the oil put fresh oil in it that's another thing I gotta figure out is what type of engine oil that takes, which I'm sure I can easily Google it and look it up. Um, I, I seen the, the fleet guard filter, but of course a dumbass like me forgot to write down the number, the part number to that filter. So I have to take it back off again sometime and order a filter. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then it's gonna need coolant too, cause it'll run for a little while without it, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, but at least, you know, we got a, got a pretty big jump on it now. She is, uh, she is free. So hopefully she'll stay free, but I don't know, I guess we'll go out there. It shouldn't freeze up now. You wouldn't think not unless it sits for another 10, 15 years or whatever, but I wish my uncle would have been a smart guy and just kind of kept going out there at least once a year and turning it over with a hand crank at least. That would have stopped, would have saved us all this bullshit if he just would have did that at least once a year. And then maybe take the spark plugs out, you know, and throw some engine oil down. Some used oil would, would do just fine, just to keep everything lubricated, you know. So, but what are you going to do? He didn't do it, so, but whatever. So yeah, so I guess guys, that's pretty much it. Just want to give you guys a little update. The sun bitch is free, so she don't really need a new heart after all. It's just you know that's usually when shit like that goes wrong, that's usually what you need to do. So, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> so, ooh, a good breeze coming through. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, one last thing too is I did talk to Right Channel Radios. Because they gave me the wrong damn mount for this. Uh, the This mount is alright, but the stud is the wrong stud for my work, my needs. So they apologize, and they are going to send me out the correct one, supposedly the correct one this time, for free. And they didn't say anything about wanting this back. So I don't know if they're going to send me just the stud, or if it's going to be the whole complete thing. Either way, I don't really care, but um, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with the mount. It's just a stud. It's the wrong style for me. I mean, if I had that type of wire, then it'd be all right. But the studs are cheaper than the wire. So, yeah. So hopefully, one of these days here, we'll get this, you know, figured out. And then we can put uh, that all back together and run some coax. And then we'll order a CB radio. We'll put her back up here. I actually took my freaking wires off. I wish I would have left them on there now. I guess I could always make new ones. I'd probably make them out of, out of my own metal would be alright, but I think the other ones are made out of some kind of a light aluminum wire, but I think I cut them. They're in there, but I think I cut them, so yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. So I'll just make some new ones. It'll be fine. So, but yeah, other than that, guys, that is pretty much it. So, um, the tractor is free. 
I'll order the gasket whenever I find the right one for it. And then, unless any of us, any of you guys know, but whatever. So, uh, once I find the right one, we'll put it on and put the head back on. Get everything nice and squeaky clean. Put it all back together, torque it down. Well, arm torque, not their specs, because I don't know their specs. I don't have a... I don't have a book on these trackers. I need to get them, but God, they're like 50 bucks or more. I need one for the 400, because my uncle's looking for one. And then I need one for the L130, the grain truck, or in this case, the bale hauler, because that's what it'll be doing in its, its future now is hauling bales. I could be hauling trash too, but that's another project too, you know, but the farm all was the main project. That was the one I wanted to work on because we actually do because I actually do have a use for that so so yeah so I got two projects but there's not enough of that green stuff you know to go around for everything but you know so but yeah I don't know if she'll be she might be running by fall at least anyway the, the little tracker but I don't think we'll be using it because I don't know, it just depends on how quick I can get everything put back together. If I can put it back together in a couple of weeks, put some fresh oil on it, get some filters here for it, fill her up, get her running. Um, then we can probably order a couple of steer tires. It only needs a couple of steer tires, even though the one back tire is flat, but it might hold air for a while. Just gotta replace the steers for now. Check the transmission, make sure it's full hydraulic oil or whatever it takes. That's another thing I gotta figure out is what kind of transmission oil it takes. I imagine it's just hydraulic oil. So, yeah, probably not because this record doesn't have hydraulics. So, it might just be some type of a, of a transmission oil. I don't really know. I guess you guys can let me know, but. So, that's gonna have to get done, which, whatever. I mean, it, Whatever it takes, we can get a couple of gallons of it and throw it in there. I guess it'll probably take more than a couple of gallons, but a couple of gallons would keep it from running dry completely. So, yeah. But hey, at least we're getting summer, right? At least we're freaking getting summer finally. So, she might be running by fall. I don't know, but she's not going to run much. Probably put an hour or two on it, and then that'll be it for the year. <laughs> it's not kind of funny how that works. It was the same way with the grain truck, too. We got her running. Had her running for a couple of months and then winter hit, so we had to had to put her back to sleep. But whatever. I haven't haven't started the grain truck for a couple of weeks, so should probably go back out there and do that again too. But I don't I don't think it, it'll seize up because I imagine I'll be starting it plenty more yet this year. But I don't know if I'll be driving it much. No, unless I come up with some extra cash to get, you know, at least one tire, but, so. Too many projects and not enough of that, you know, that green paper to go around, so. But, whatever, just, just one thing at a time, so. Anyways, guys, I'm going to take off, so I guess uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff, so yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care easy.